I've seen everything else Lilo and Stitch, why not watch the series? I think this is it. I think I've finally seen everything Lilo and Stitch related. Oh, come on, there's an anime? No, screw it, I'm stopping here. That's not to say at all I didn't have a lot of fun watching this show. In fact, everything Lilo and Stitch has really, really grown on me. And this is already coming from a place of love because I like the movie. And though that was a modest success when it came out, it's grown quite the following over the years, resulting in sequels, a series, hell, like I said, even an anime, and tons of merchandise. And honestly, I can see why. These are very, very, very charming characters. Taking place in between the Lilo and Stitch sequels, yeah, like I said, I'm kind of watching this out of order. A ton of experiments have been unleashed, and an intergalactic criminal named Hamster Veal, or is it Hamster Wheel, they kind of go back and forth, is using his forcibly retired henchman Gantu to capture them all and use them as weapons. Lilo and Stitch, naturally, don't want them to be used as weapons and instead try to capture them to, well, set them free, give them a place that they can call home. Yeah, it's kind of like Disney's Pokémon. Every week there's a new creature that can do a new power, but I actually kind of like the idea that they're not capturing them to use them as weapons. If anything, I feel like the Pokémon trainers would be seen as villains in this world. They're kind of more like the Crocodile Hunter. They capture them, but then they try to take them to a place where they can be safe, and I like that. You don't usually see that in kids' shows. If something's trying to kill you, you just kill it right back or stop it in some way. Here, they just try to find the right place where they belong. And that's kind of the attitude of the whole show. Nice and laid back. So many Disney shows, hell, just so many kid shows in general, are trying to be the next big thing, really action-packed and saying cool phrases, and they all look beautiful and wear the latest fashions, you know the drill. And while I like some shows that do that, like Kim Possible, especially because I felt like they utilized that into the joke, Lilo and Stitch has much more of an innocent quality. It's kind of like a mix of the adventure elements from Miyazaki films and the relaxed elements of Winnie the Pooh, and they surprisingly work really well together. Even the animation isn't anything groundbreaking, but it's decent and non-threatening. I really like that they still use watercolor backgrounds. Whenever a violent moment does work its way into the show, it's usually done with a lot of creativity and, again, a lot of comedy. And so much of the comedy comes from the voice actors. I really like that they use the original cast all throughout this series. Devay Chase, David Ogden Steers, Tia Carrere, Kevin Michael Richardson, all of them are so funny. And even the newcomers are great, with Jeff Bennett as Hamster Veal and Rob Paulson as Ruben, this sidekick alien who's obsessed with sandwiches. Yeah, it doesn't sound that funny, but he uses that Bill Burr voice that just cracks me the hell up, and I love it. I feel like they really take advantage of the fact that this takes place in Hawaii, because everyone is just so chill. No one even really cares that there's aliens walking around. They just kind of accept it at this point. And yeah, you know how Disney's been on this ethical, preachy high horse recently? Like, everything they talk about has to have some sort of social self-righteousness to it. There's literally a cross-dressing alien in this, and it feels totally natural. It starts off as kind of a joke, you know, he's dressing up like the wife and the other alien is dressing up like the husband, but he just seems to like it, and nobody has a problem with it. And there's no special episode where they're wagging their finger at you that kids always seem to hate, and adults seem to hate for that matter. He just likes to wear dresses, and nobody cares. Kick ass, man, you do you. Speaking of lessons, there are quite a few in this show, and they're usually the ones you'd expect. The value of friendship, being confident, believing in yourself, all that stuff. It's nothing that mind-blowing, but I don't think it's supposed to be in a show like this. Sometimes even characters from other shows pop up to enforce that lesson. Yeah, there's a lot of crossovers in this. If there was an animated Disney show on at the time, chances are it made its way onto Lilo and Stitch. You name it, The Proud Family, Kim Possible, Jake Long. Even Recess somehow worked its way in there. I wouldn't mind too much, except they all kind of seem really scrunched together, like every other episode felt like a crossover episode, at least in season two. But again, if the show had great characters, it was nice to see him interact with these great characters as well. If I had one problem with the show, and this is a really odd thing to critique, I'd actually say it's the intro. I mean, yeah, the song's fine and it looks cute and everything, but I'll just say it, there's something bizarrely creepy about this scene. <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to kiss me or eat me, but I don't like it. It even holds on the title uncomfortably long. Wow. Cut! But yeah, if the intro is the biggest complaint I can have about this show, I think it's doing a lot of things right. Like I said, I don't think this is one of the great shows or anything, but it's a nice, smaller show. And you know what? We need those. 
I feel like we take them for granted and they actually play a bigger part than sometimes we give them credit for. I especially like how it got me more into the alien stuff. In the original film, I liked the stuff with the sisters, but the aliens were just kind of generic to me. But the show actually made them really funny, and I liked seeing these different creations, and they were weird and imaginative, and I liked seeing how they had a different solution for every one, and how they were going to interact with these great characters. So if you're a Lilo and Stitch fan, definitely check it out. Even if you're not, I still might recommend it. If you're just in the mood to watch something laid back and extremely cute, Lilo and Stitch have got you covered.